Hey there, everybody. Hello, Hello, hello. Meredith. How Hi, are you doing? Taylor. <laughs> this is kind of cool. This is our first like stream, or at least my stream. So I'm excited for for all this sort of stuff. So um, yeah, we're going to jump into PHP troubleshooting um, on the good old PHP 8 changes we made a couple weeks ago. Um, to keep the servers online. So I'm sure if, or on the most recent soft P or PHP version. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you have been troubleshooting some broken plugins, themes, sites in general after this. So I kind of wanted to do a stream about this because of that. And I know on Reclaim Zen, we've been troubleshooting a whole lot um, about this. So just some good tips and tricks on that side. Um, we're going to focus on WordPress in particular for this one. Um, but this does, but the error logging and that sort of thing can also apply to like Omeka or Merkur 2 and other things like that. Um, so yes. Um, First, I did want to touch on some timelines within PHP, which I think is really helpful to kind of put in perspective as to why we made these changes for PHP the to PHP 8. Um, and the PHP developers like to release um, a current version of PHP for two years after the betas and all of that good stuff. So within that initial release, um, a PHP version is supported for up to two years um, for active active releases, and then another year after for security releases. So anything major, like um, any vulnerabilities or anything like that are applied as patches to the versions. Um, this means that PHP 7.4 is actually out of security updates at the end of the month, um, which means it's re it's reached its end of life. It's no longer getting any additional updates, all that good stuff. Um, and surprisingly enough, PHP 8 is not re is reaching the end of its active support um, as well at the end of Jan uh, at the end of November. So it's kind of interesting to see how long PHP 8 has been in active release for for two years really. And we're halfway through PHP 8.1, which is wild to me to think about. Yeah. And from what I was reading too, PHP 8.1 is a bigger update than the R shift to 8. Too, right, in terms of breaking of... changes, I'm guessing? Yes. Yeah. Fun. So it's like how we switch <laughs> from se from 5.6 to 7.1 and 7.2 back like two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm expecting it's going to be like that, like that big of a change. So. Yeah, it, and it's I think important to note too the difference between the active support and the security updates, right? So mm -hmm. seven four is security updates are almost up. It is it is time to move on, right? Like there mm -hmm. it, it is going to be a pro pretty soon unsafe, right? Um, from a security yeah. standpoint, to be running sites that are using that when when a vulnerability gets found, which eventually one will be. It will not be patched, right? Um, right. The the active support is does include so like where eight is right now and is about to be done with active support includes security, but it also includes like bug fixes and things mm -hmm. like that. And at a certain point, they kind of freeze it and go like, look, any further development, we're going to move on to the next version. Mm -hmm. And after two years of that, it's it, it's usually fine, right? So yeah, what we're most concerned about is that security timeline. So you still have a good a good year left on 8.0 and 8.1 is on our servers right now. So you can try out 8.1 if you really want to, um, but you will probably find that certain plugins and things aren't quite supporting it yet. So it's one of those things where you can try it, but I wouldn't be stressed out if you have to be on, if you're on eight, that's where most people are at right now, basically. Um, and yeah. I think a lot of people are moving on from 7.4 still, which is, why we're doing this stream. So yeah, exactly. Um, and it's also important to note too that we still have version 7.2 through 8.1 on our servers. Um, we don't recommend you use 7.2 or 7.3 right now. Those have definitely been past end of life support. Um, and with 7.4 reaching that, um, we typically keep that version on our servers for like a, le a year or so after end of life support finishes. So it's not like it's a priority to move to PHP 8, but also there's time to work on it if needed. So that's that's something totally. that that I think 
we forget a lot too. There's like a big rush to kind of move up versions, but there's also time to, to like troubleshoot if needed. So um, it's pretty cool. And you can read more about all of this stuff on the php.net um, website, which is really helpful um, for looking through um, any like bugs or any news that PHP is doing. Yeah. On that side, so. The other thing I think is probably worth pointing out too is that the reason why our default, right, the server default is eight right now, is to catch these things while you still have a lot of time to move on from mm -hmm. seven to four, right? You you only yeah. have security updates for a little while, um, so now's the time to move. But but it will still be on the server, so if it takes a little longer than that, you're not completely out of luck. We had people say like, why make that switch now? It's like, well, you either make it now and find out what's broken now, or you find out what's broken a year from now and you only have literal days to fix it. So um, that's no good, obviously. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. Well, on to what the typical error looks like. Um, not every WordPress site reports errors in the same way. Um, it could be you just get a generic a critical errors on your website. You get an HTTP 500 error um, and sometimes the errors are printed on the page itself which is also which is the best option it's super helpful um to see the errors on the screen um so it's important to know what the error error pages look like and where to go um, and wordpress prints the errors into the error log on the file manager in the file system of the account um, and you can also adjust the wp config to adjust the um, how the errors are displayed on the page, so that you can have these the the printing um, error like this last screenshot down at the bottom and that sort of thing. So um, it is helpful um, on that side. From there, um, within the error log or within the error message, you'll see a whole bunch of file paths as well, and that points to where the specific error is coming from, whether it be a plugin or a theme or even um, some of the core files within WordPress. Sometimes there's um, a random, there's like a second line of some code that's duplicated somewhere in the WP config file that's causing issues. So um, it's important to, to read through and kind of identify um, that side of the error. Um, typically, it will print the full path, so you can see. Um, I don't. I, you probably can't see my um, marker, but um, it it goes home slash Meredith slash reclaim test dot com slash wp content, which means that there's either a plugin or a theme going going wrong with this. Um, and if it's anywhere else, it will it will just like really drill in and tell you um, on that side. Um, from there. Um, and when you're troubleshooting, don't panic. You can take time to, to get your head in the right space and, and breathe before you um, start troubleshooting. Um, my first recommendation is to initially lower the PHP version back down to 7.4 to determine that it is indeed the PHP version change that caused the issue. There have been multiple WordPress updates as well in the same time frame. So um, I think from 6.0 to 6.0.1 and then to 6.1 from the from the beginning of October. So um, it could also be a backup issue or a upgrade issue, um, but it's always helpful to know um, that if you lower the PHP version, that kind of tells you, hey, this is like specifically that change. And you can also disable the plugin from the dashboard or the file manager if needed, um, which is also really helpful if the if you can see that the file path links directly to the specific plugin. Um, and then once you get access to the dashboard, you can then see if, if there's an update or if the plugin itself um, is just really out of date, hasn't been updated since 2015, and it is no longer compatible. Um, namely, like social media plugins that would connect like your Facebook or Instagram to your website back in the day. Those have kind of fallen off of the um, WordPress repository for plugins, so they're no longer getting active updates or they've been ab abandoned projects. 
yeah. and all of that good stuff. Sliders. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely another one. Um, I think with I think- like Gutenberg and stuff, it has kind of moved a lot of people's need for that. And and just like site mm-hmm. builders in general, like people do yeah, those in exactly. Elementor now. Yeah. Although one site builder plugin has been causing issues um, as a repeated offender on that side. Yeah. Um, and so when you lower your PHP version, you can do that within cPanel. Um, also within the HD access, you can set a rule to designate the specific version of which you'd like to lower. Um, and that will bring the site back online from there. Um, and continuing with the, just the with the plugins, um, just make sure you can check, is there an update needed for the plugin to make it compatible? Um, how old the plugin was? So if anything is like, like I said, like 2015 and older, it's definitely not something that's worth keeping around and could also be a vulnerability in that sense. So it's a good time to kind of evaluate and say, Hey, like, is this plugin actually needed? Do you need this for any mission critical side to the work, to the site or anything like that? Um, and then we've seen some social media widgets and embeds, um, slider plugins, and also a couple page builder plugins that have been the culprit um, for a lot of these. Um, also themes, um, which would cause the site to go down as well. And you can change the theme back to a default WordPress theme within the dashboard or within the database on the WP options table. So that's really helpful. Um, in particular, like I think one theme, the Kale theme is one that is not compatible with PHP 8 right now. Um, so knowing that you can go into the database table and change that is really helpful to bring everything back up. Um, and you want to change the template and the style sheet rows to any like 2022, 2020, anything like that. We'll bring the site back online. Um, right now, 2023 is the new WordPress default theme. So when you install a fresh copy of WordPress, 2023 will be installed um, automatically. So you can do that from there. Um, and if all else fails, you can replace core files um, through the file manager or through um, the, um, the WPC- WP. yeah. yeah, WPCLI. That's um, that's great if no one's used that. I used to do it the the couple times I had to do it. I used to do it the um, file manager way, and I mean it's not the end of the world or anything, but the WPCLI makes it really fast and easy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and while you're doing this, the WPCLI is super helpful because it will exclude the content folder, WP content folder. So that's where all of the plugins, themes, media. Um, are stored on the WordPress site. So you want to make sure to, to exclude that folder from the the replace and all of that good stuff. So um, we do have that documented there. Um, and just some initial final or final thoughts on that side before we kind of go into like a, um, a live troubleshoot. Um, don't obviously don't panic. We are here for you if you need any help um, while you've been troubleshooting. So definitely let us know. Um, try your best to work with the plugin um, or keep or keep the plugin disabled unless it's actually mission critical to the website because we do want to make sure you stay on PHP 8 um, as much as possible. Um, a lot of times the plugin developers are actually having their, they have an active update in the works to, to be compatible. So it might just be a little bit of time before you can um, upgrade back to PHP 8. Um, and that's, that's why we keep PHP 7 for on the server for, for the time that we do just so then that way it's easy enough to, to switch back and forth if needed. And then if something just goes wrong during the process, we have backups to be able to restore. So there's no, lost content or anything like that. Um, We did make this change for a lot of schools, um, particularly Domain of One Zone, um, throughout October, I believe. Um, And then at the end of October, we made the switch for our shared hosting users. So hopefully at this point, everything's kind of filtered out, but it is helpful um, to have on that side. Um, And then I just have some further readings um, on the WordPress sections and 
um, Omeka and Domain of One's Own for all the in-depth processes for like walkthroughs and all of that. And I will provide the slides in the, the chat um, for Discord and um, that way you, you all have the links as well. So, cool. Um, cool. Let me um, change my um, screen sharing so I can bring up the page. Yeah, I wanted to, while you do that, um, mm -hmm. there's, uh, I think Shannon is in the chat kind of asking um, some questions and some advice too, um, which is good. So I, for the sake of getting this in the recording, I'm just going to kind of sum up some of these things. Um, Shannon mentioned um, that so far, most of the troubleshooting they've done that she's done has not like completely destroyed a site in terms of usually it's those smaller, older plugins that are poorly maintained. Um, yeah. Of course, everything's reversible. That not destroyed in is a not in the sense that it's completely broken. But just saying, like if you have to disable a plugin, often it's not a huge deal. I, there there is a particular <laughs> uh, page builder plugin that I've run into a couple times that I think um, I don't want to name names because maybe they'll update soon. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's one of the le less popular ones I would say, um, and. Um, she also mentioned that she often has and teaches her students to disable themes by renaming them in the file manager, which is the other mm -hmm. way to do it. You can either do it in the database or the file manager. I like to do it in the file manager a lot because it's kind of easy to do, but it can be tricky because you do have to know what theme is enabled in order to do it that way. So sometimes yes. it can be a little bit faster to do it in the database. It, it sort of depends. Fast is sort of relative. And that yeah. doesn't work for multi-site. You wouldn't really want to do that on multi-site because you're working with an individual site. So then it's better to do it in the database there too. So yeah, I put exactly. in the chat a link to the our article um, on how to do it in the database, but your screenshot kind of summed it up. It's, you know, go in to PHP My Admin, find the um, the two, two the, I think, style sheet and template, and you can change the name there. Yeah, absolutely. And I like changing it in either option. Um, be, mostly the database um, side because it doesn't remove any of like the stored settings or anything like that that you might need um, oh. when you're updating the plugin and all of that good stuff. So um, we've got all of that um, there. So I, everybody say hi to Brandon too in the <laughs> background, just got home from work. So, um, okay. So I've got a broken site um, on my domain from a, um, this is a theme in particular um, that has been known to cause issues with PHP 8. It does still work on PHP 7, so that's good. Um, this is kind of where I'm talking about if like the theme or plugin is um, causing issues on that side, be or the, the theme itself is causing issues because this is really mission critical to the site and the appearance of like how it looks and everything like that. So if it's broken, you don't really want to to like remove all the settings on that side. So a qu the quick fix that I was saying before is to change the PHP version directly in cPanel back a version. So in this case, PHP 7.4. And then once that goes and you refresh the page, the site will come back online. Um, and you can see the theme is loading just fine. Um, on that side. Um, so I'll leave this on 7.4 for right now, and then I'm going to break the site again. Um, and then see how that goes. I'm changing the PHP version again, back up to 8. Um, there we go. Oh no, that's the theme. So I'm going to change oh, it back yeah. to. I was say there should be if that's my plugin uh, deal. There should be two of them have to be enabled. Oh, both have to be enabled. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, this I'll also go through like how you can locate the specific side because I couldn't highlight it on the slide. Um, but typically it's like one of the first lines. Um, of the error and it just once you see the whole. So, like all the slashes and everything, you'll know that's where the side of it is. I'll change this back and then I'll activate both of the plugins. Uh, 
Oh, interesting. I'm only seeing the one. Yeah, I only have the one. Uh, hmm. Yeah, let me change. Let me get that fixed really quick. Oh, um, yeah, my demo plugins you may have to do via the file manager because it's like one zip with two plugins. So I'm not 100% sure if it'll work that way or not. But okay, let me. Um, yeah, see, so yeah, I can see right there WP Breaker 2. Yeah. Yeah, let me, I can take care of that. We'll have to see too. It's, it's been a little bit since I've used my, these plugins. Um, so it's possible that they're no longer broken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not in GZIP format, what? That's so weird. Okay, hold on, I can. Let, I can upload the other zip really quick. Um, yeah. There we go. Oh, no, they both installed. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh man, that's crazy. So it breaks, but in a different way now. Oh man. Okay. Oh, that's funny. Okay. So I, sometimes I think WordPress we'll see... must have be handling this error better than it used to. So then it, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let me change the theme and see if I can adjust the version to see if that works. Um, and then we can go from there. This is the beauty of like live troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. uh, we can try different, different options. I also tried to use the rollback plugin to bring um, everything back online. Like I like switched down to version two sure. of Elementor to see if that would cause an issue or break, break the site or anything like that. But um, that would also help. So um, yeah, I'm still getting the, oh, uh, yeah, um, I think. Yeah, Elementor. Well, the other plugin you were working with is Elementor, so maybe if I deactivate. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. It's a old. These plugins are two pretty popular plugins, but it's very specific versions of them. Um, so, but again, it's very possible that WordPress is handling whatever error they were throwing before. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that's not going to work anymore. It's a demo I did a couple months ago, and it would. It would break a site instantly, um, but um, luckily, <laughs> WordPress <laughs> moves on in usually positive ways. In yeah, terms of stability. Um, so yeah. I will have to at some point make a more broken plugin. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Cool. But you know, if it did break the site, right? Like one of the 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 ideas to show here is that you can simply rename the folder if a, a plugin is activated and it will be turned off. Um, you can even rename, what I usually do is rename the entire plugins folder. Um, so you turn all plugins off and go back to the site and you're golden. Then you can individually turn plugins back on once you have access to the dashboard again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then to look and see when the plugin was last updated, it you can look at the last modified dates typically um, if you've been working in the WordPress dashboard to install, so you can see like the subscribe to comments plugin hasn't been updated since 2015. Um, but it still works. It's still good to go on that side. And you can see the changes that I made um, installing the rollback plugin this morning and then the other like breaker plugins this afternoon. So that's also really helpful to kind of get a sense of maybe it's an abandoned project or anything like that that would cause the site to go offline from there. Awesome. Yeah. I'll throw it out there too. Like, does it, if anybody watching has any questions, let us know. Um, we can go through that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, throw them in the chat on the stream or um, in Discord is fine too. Um, wherever you prefer. 
Um, but um, yeah, so one of one of the other things that I think is probably um, not WordPress related, but certainly PHP related, that may be worth mentioning too is the different ways that different um, applications report errors. I think we get very used to, at least I do, that WordPress is pretty good about when a site is broken, writing the error to the screen or to the mm -hmm. page or um, putting it in the error log, um, which is that file on the file manager um, or both. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one of the main things that I, um, and I can pull this up too, that I honestly, every time I work with Omeka, I kind of forget is that Omeka doesn't really work that way out of the box. You have to actually enable Omeka um, error logging. Um, and that is a question we get very often. So let me um, just pull that up really quick. Okay, so um, so uh, if you're working with Omeka and um, you are trying to determine what is the matter with a site, like maybe you the site won't load on PHP 8, you roll it back to 7.4 and it's working okay, but you need to figure out what exactly is going on. Um, you will need to go to the file manager um, and you can go to where your Omeka install is. Uh, you'll want to um, show hidden files so that you can actually look at the HT access file. So in the HT access file for all Omeka installs, and I'll blow this up a little bit, um, there is a line that says set env application env uh, environment development. You have to actually remove the little pound symbol here to comp to because the line is commented out as it is. Um, if you remove that, um, it will now print any errors it has right to the page. Now, the problem is it will always do that, even if it's not like a critical like failure. <laughs> um, yeah. So you probably want to enable this, do your troubleshooting, and then put that pound symbol back to comment it out when you're done. Because there are a lot of warnings and things that are not going to necessarily impact your site that you wouldn't want right at the top of every single page on your Omeka site. So um, just wanted to point that out there. It's a real common thing that kind of always, every time I'm looking at Omeka, I'm like, oh yes, I have to enable that. And as far as I know, Omeka does not have, really d almost never writes to error underscore log the way WordPress does. I think there are probably exceptions yeah. to that because it sort of depends on where the error comes from, I think. But mm -hmm. in general, you're not going to have that file there to look at past errors, which is, kind of a bummer but um yeah it's it's a workaround that works pretty well not even a workaround it's just something you have to keep in mind <laughs> yeah absolutely and omega s too i think that guide shows both processes you have to like change your word in the hd access at the top line um for the um production to development side of things as well um and then you can go in and upgrade the plugins um manually you have to upload the zip and extract the files and um, then you can go into the dashboard to update from there um, so that's another common issue we see is that because omeka doesn't have like the repository that wordpress does where you can install directly in the dashboard a lot of times plugins and themes are really out of date and they go offline when the plugin when the php version changes so yeah and it's um, so easy to get used to the wordpress way of things where it will yeah. do plugin updates for you. In fact, you don't even have to go in there and do them. Installatron will do them if you have it set by default. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a that's a big one too, is you have to go check and manually do those uh, Omeka module updates and themes. So yep. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not seeing any other questions. Is there anything else you wanted to go through? Um, I'm all set on my end too, but if you guys are watching this in the future, definitely let us know if you do have anything come up. Um, and I'd love to continue the conversation if For sure. you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Throw, throw questions in discord, um, or in our community forums, community.reclaimhosting.com. Um, and we'd be happy to talk about it there. Um, and we really appreciate when people can contribute even questions to those spaces, right? Um, just because usually people have the same question as you. If you're, don't feel afraid to ask them is what I'm saying. It's always good to see those out in the open so that other people can learn from them too. So um, thanks everyone who watched. Thanks everyone uh, who tuned in and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah.